Today, we're going to find out if adding a new graphics card can bring life to an old computer. The PC in question is an old dual core office PC featuring an AMD Athlon 2X2270 which is similar in performance to an Intel Core 2 Duo. 4GB of DDR2 RAM and NVIDIA GeForce 6150 SE Enforce 430 integrated graphics. I would have liked to use the integrated GPU in my testing but not a single game opened when I was using it. The GPU I'm using then is my own Gigabyte Radeon R9 380 from my main rig with an i5-4460 which I will be using to compare to the older system. I used 9 games in total for my testing including demanding modern titles and some older games from around the time of the Athlon. The R9 380 is normally capable of playing games at 1080p high settings at 60fps but when paired with a 7 year old dual core who knows how it will perform. So can this aging desktop be transformed into a capable gaming PC? Let's find out. Starting with Arma 3, the i5 system achieves a silky smooth 86 FPS on average, while the Athlon system has a much lower average of 27 FPS. Neither system experienced any severe stuttering or low FPS, although the experience on the old system is still playable. It felt much more sluggish when trying to shoot targets, and it became especially difficult when the targets were far away. Armour loves a good powerful CPU, and the results show this. Battlefield Bad Company 2 is the oldest game in this test and as expected both systems provide a smooth experience at 1080p with very few stutters or frame drops. Of course the new system sailed through this test and would have even had higher frames only for the 200fps cap. However the Athlon was still definitely a bottleneck as the FPS was nearly the same on high settings compared to low. So the Skylines absolutely destroyed the Athlon, where it could only achieve 14 FPS on average dipping to as low as 3 FPS while the i5 system had no trouble running the game at an average of 77 FPS but still suffered from stuttering when zoomed into the city. Playing on this old system is just downright unplayable as there is way too much going on for the old dual core to handle. CSGO is known to run on pretty much everything and that is the case for the Athlon here. It achieved an average of 49 FPS and a minimum of 32 which is playable but not ideal for a competitive shooter like this where responsive gameplay can be the difference between life and death. I kind of expected a bit more from the Athlon here as this game doesn't stress CPUs at all. Follow 4 was playable on both these systems where the i5 pretty much maxed out the FPS cap the whole time and the Athlon achieved a respectable 32 FPS on average which is impressive considering the age of the CPU. The minimum of 9 FPS was the only stuttering that occurred when a truck exploded. Even though 32 FPS is fine it still feels much more sluggish compared to the solid 60 of the i5 system. Grid Autosport is a last gen title that isn't very graphically intensive, especially on low settings and as such I expected the Athlon to perform well here, even though it's perfectly playable with the older system. The average of 43 FPS is a bit lower than I thought it would be. Grand Theft Auto 5 performed great with the new system with an average of 125 FPS but the older systems really struggled to keep up. At the beginning of the benchmark run things were pretty smooth around 30 FPS but by the end the game was stuttering all over the place. I think this problem was less about the CPU and more about the 4GB of RAM which was being maxed out constantly during the run meaning the game had to start using a much slower page file to load assets, hence the stuttering and making the game unplayable. Project Cars is a pretty demanding racing game and the results show this. The i5 system had a solid frame rate of 64 FPS most of the time but did have the rare stutter down to 26. 
The game performed strangely on the Athlon, where it would go into a sort of a slow motion. I believe this is the game's way of making sure the Athlon could try and keep up with the numerous complex physics calculations being made every second. It was unplayable regardless of this though. Last but not least, Rocket League is not a very demanding title and is well optimized for a variety of systems. It performed great on both systems with the new system maxing out the FPS cap of 250 and the old system achieving a solid 119 FPS on average with a minimum of 62. Even when turned up to high, both systems stayed well above 60 FPS. Just as a little side note before I finish, here's some games that I selected out of the testing suite just to see how they would run on high settings compared to the low I was testing them with on the Athlon system and as you can see they're actually quite playable. Just apologies for the choppiness in some of the gameplay because the system really couldn't handle recording and playing games at the same time so there will be a bit of choppiness even at the resolution I think I recorded in was. 640 by 480 or something like that so ridiculously low resolution but it couldn't handle it so yeah these games are actually playable this just proves that there's a huge cpu bottleneck with this system so there you go the athlon system can actually play some modern games at decent frame rates which in more than a few games it surprised me that it could actually pull off maybe 30 fps plus of course the newer system blows it away but that's not the point the point is that this system is coming up on 7 years old now, there's even parts from 10 years ago, motherboard for example. So the fact that this can play some decent titles from around 2013-2014 is remarkable really. Especially since an office PC like this was never intended to play games in the first place. So if you have an older system like this one and you're looking to play some games then fear not it will actually play games decently maybe not some CPU intensive games like Arma 3 and maybe GTA 5 but for sure definitely you would be able to play some of the older titles in this test so thank you very much for watching guys I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope it was informative and uh, if you enjoyed the video then leave a like Make sure to subscribe for more content like this in the future, I'll be doing some more tests like this, benchmarks, uh, reviews, I have a couple of previews on games coming up, and thank you very much for watching once again, and I'll see you next time.